Now, if you're a local, you'll know the botanical gardens very well. It's right in the centre of the town, next to ANU and Black Mountain, and a gorgeous spot. If you don't know it, if you're outside Canberra, then uh, like, like many of our cultural institutions, it's been around literally 50 years now. And amongst what it does, it's a beautiful place. You get married there and cafes and so on. But their mission is a conservation mission. And so they have seed banks and core banks and samples of botanicals, literally, not surprisingly, from all around Australia. And there's a series of gardens which you can go to, whether it's gum trees or desert gardens and so on. And it's a, a fortune we can't go at the moment for obvious reasons, but um, in a happier days and day soon, I hope, um, it's a really, really beautiful spot. So anyway, so the, um, they approached Underground Spirits to create a special gin to mark their 50th anniversary this year. Um, and it was a whole part of a whole series of uh, program events. And yours truly was going to be part of that. We were scheduled to do an event in May. They've got a brand new Banksia garden that's now being completed. Oh, kick my tinny now. Don't get me thirsty. I'm a bad influence. I really, really am. Sorry about that. <laughs> and Underground's here to join us. So we're just talking about uh, your release for the Botanic Gardens. Anyways. Um, so yes, we were all geared up. They commissioned me to create a cocktail based around this special gin to celebrate the launch of a brand new Banksia garden. Um, and that's all on the perpetual pause button, like so much other stuff at the moment, that's fine. Um, so I look forward to, to doing that in the near future, I hope, when things get back to normal. So I got given an advanced sample of this gin uh, several months ago. Now, and we're going to meet uh, just still a colleague in the next session after midday, um, at a 12.30, I should say, and uh, talk about how she went about this and making this, this particular gin. Now we touched on the last thing about the basics of gin making and how uh, you know you might have juniper and coriander and angelica root and all the botanical gardens and distillation and then cut down with water. This is very different again because all the botanicals come from the garden and she worked with the botanists um, and the heritage people there at the, at the gardens to do this. Now, I touched on the last episode about how difficult sometimes Australian native botanicals can be to work with. I come from a restaurant background of many years ago, and we used to have things like you know, classic kangaroo and lily pilly and kwandongs and always a uh, mate wattle seed, for example, as ingredients. And it took a while for us to get our head around how you can use it because sometimes with Australian botanicals, a little goes a very long way indeed. They're so potent and so powerful at times. So the handling of them is actually very, very hard, and which is why I was saying um, sometimes some uh, gin makers don't get that balance right, in my personal opinion. One, my one botanical may dominate, but that could be what they intend to do anyway. That's fine. So when um, when I got the early release sample uh, to give me a bit of lead time to create this cocktail for the for the botanic gardens, um, it was delicious. I really really liked it. Uh, and then I found out later that it had been tainted by smoke. And of course, you all remember the dreadful bushfires we had over the New Year, and it, it came got blanketed for a week or more was some of the worst smoke, but was the worst air quality in the world at the time. And it wasn't much fun, I can assure you. However, what it turned out was some of that smoke got into the distillation. Even with all their high-tech uh, equipment, um, somehow that smoke got into this one of the first prototype batches. And here's me not even picking that up. Actually, it was quite interesting. So when I got the proper bottle, um, I could see where they were really going with this without the smoke effect. But the, um, we'll talk a story in the next one about a happy accident, if you like, of one of the outcomes of all that smoke storm and how they've turned some of that effect, that effect into something good. But we'll come back to that in the next episode. Anyways, so this is it after all that talk. It's a very, be I think this is a very elegant, look at that beautiful, beautiful bottle. So it's different from the, um, the, the pattern of Canberra, for Underground Spirits. They've done a special label, especially for the Botanic Garden, to celebrate this 50th anniversary. I mean, there were a lovely bunch of people to deal with. They're absolutely gorgeous. So I really feel them because they had an amazing program planned for the year. But we'll get, we'll get there in the end. Um, so it's called Ad Crescendum, uh, Native Gin. So this is a very, very contemporary kind of style. Now, I've written down all the botanicals in uh, Latin, and I'm going to butcher them, so I'm not going to do that. Um, I've got a question here by Leela. Hello, Leela. I'm not trying to interrupt you, but how can we use the Bar Hill Tomcat Gin in a martini? Love. Oh, Okay. Can I hold you to that and I'll come back to you on that one? Because, um, I'll, yeah, it's a tricky one. I'll, I'll have to be thinking about that, but I'll definitely answer you. Don't worry. Alrighty. Um, so, in no particular order, this particular gin has pepperberry, banksia, finger lime, uh, yam daisy, plum pine, otherwise known as Illawarra plum, uh, grey myrtle, so that's a different style of myrtle as opposed to, say, lemon myrtle, rainforest aniseed, and native raspberry. 
So there's a few distillers around Australia experimenting and working with some successfully quite interesting um, native botanicals, and they're a completely different trip. So when when I look at them and taste them and review them or whatever, um, it takes you a while to get your head around because they're such a different flavour profile. They are, not surprisingly, unique. They're not like a juniper berry. Um, and lemon myrtle, by the way, or see, can often look like a little grassy place like that. Because usually when you're working with botanicals, you're working with, g'day cupping, thanks for coming by. Um, usually when you're working with botanicals, they're often, you're not talking like, if we're talking about citrus, often it's the peel of the lemon or the peel of the orange or a dry botanical. And again, um, this is like what pepperberry looks, native pepperberry looks like. It's just a very fine powder. And um, again, into what uh, Underground does, and we can talk about when we tune in next, next episode, is uh, they infuse the spirit, which is their classic neutral spirit, which they make um, from Australian wheat, um, to get the flavours. So the spirit takes on these flavours, and sometimes they might do it individually. So I just use soak it in one and then another and blend it together, or they might go in a basket. We'll find out how that works. So what's this thing taste like um, and what it smells like? And with that influence, it is after midday now, so it's kind of legit, right? Um, so this is a very special release. Um, this is available now for sale um, on the Underground website and by the handmade uh, website today, which I've been talking about uh, for Mother's Day. And uh, some of the proceeds of the sale of the bottle goes towards conservation at the gardens. So you can feel good and feel good at the same time. Um, you're welcome. Cheers, everyone. That's how it goes. Now, this is a very distinctive um, style of gin because, as we just discussed, it's got a whole different premise indeed. Um, all those very interesting nine indigenous botanicals, nothing imported, all from botanic gardens. So it's very interesting. On the nose, it's very subtle. I'm not getting anything one in particular. I'm not kind of wimping out there, but... Uh, it's very, just very subtle, musky, floral notes, not surprisingly, but it's just very, very, very close in. It's not one thing jumping out going, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. Maybe a little bit of subtle sweetness to it. Probably maybe from the raspberry. Cheers. The things I do for you. Now, I had a martini with this last night, just, you know, homework. Um, very dry, crisp, very forward on the palate, um, not heavy, not boozy at all. Again, that's very akin to the whole house style, if you like. It's like really, really clean spirit. Um, and again, what I, the expression I use is closely woven. So all those nine botanicals are all kind of bounce each other out. And I understand that they went through, not surprisingly, lots of prototypes to try and land something that works. Again, they needed the understanding of each botanical and how it behaves when you distill it, let alone how they work together. And so that's the art of being a distiller. Um, so it is closely woven, very subtle, crisp and dry and light. You really got to listen to it. But when I had a martini last night, couldn't help myself, um, because it is so subtle and so light and delicate, um, I used this particular French remove Dolon. I have a couple I have three or four at home, depending. And my cue is depending on the intensity of the gin or the vodka, what, how dry I want, etc. I choose them and buy which one or what ratio I'm after. So Dolan is a very light and dry French vermouth. Um, and I use that five mils to 60 mils, what's that, I know after all, uh, 60 mils um, of the Ed Crescentium gin. And it was delicious. And with, with an olive, I didn't think a lemon would take over too much, so just a single olive uh, and no orange bitters. So I really, really just stripped it back and let this gin speak for itself. And it worked a treat. It was kind of almost like a rich textural on the palate um, and just lots of little nuances would come through. So I'm not doing a great job, I don't think, of describing it um, to you, but it is a gin of great finesse and complexity. And it just, I just kept coming back to it and just really thinking, and that's a sign. You know, you have a really good wine and there might be two of you over the table and you're just having a nice little chin wag and everyone's having to go, man, that's good. It was like that. So... Um, Props to, I'm not just saying that because, you know, they've asked me to talk about it. I'm really saying this is a really accomplished product, knowing how difficult it is to work with these kind of botanicals. So well done, Underground, for that. And again, um, proceeds, if you want to get a bottle of it, um, some of the proceeds go to help the gardens in their conservation work, which is amazing. Now, what we're going to be doing so, uh, soon, and it's 40% alcohol by volume. Um, so again, it's very light, 
not busy at all. So I want you to start planning some questions in a minute um, because we're going to come back at 12.30 and make the people behind who made this all this fine stuff because we've talked about their vodkas, we've talked about their gins and their chrysanthemum, and we've got other little something else to share with you a bit later as well. Um, but um, which one is this? So um, this is the special release, 50th anniversary Ad Crencium. I'm saying that right? Ad Crencium gin that's made up with nine botanicals sourced from the, worked in collaboration with the gardens. Um, good question from Katie. Uh, tend to load up our BV percentage with their gins. Is there an appetite to branch out into a style such as Navy Stroll gin? Will shall ask them when she comes shortly. That's a very good question. Um, you're welcome. Um, what was I talking about? Talking about booze, that's what I was talking about. Think about, we'll just get to Navy Strength in a minute, just while we're, while we're, che- while we're here. Um, one of the reasons why distillers go for a Navy Strength gin, and the reason it's called Navy Strength, um, it's usually up above 50% alcohol by volume. So a standard gin is 40% uh, alcohol by volume, 42. And coming back to the distillation process, remember when they make, when they make the distillation of the, of, the, of the gin or the vodka, it's coming out pure booze, right? So clearly not a good thing by itself. It's then cut or diluted uh, with water. In this case, they use local um, pristine mountain water from our catchment nearby. Um, and that's a literal dilution down to 42 or 40% alcohol by volume. That's how that works essentially. But sometimes I wanted to really dial it up. 52, 54, I've got a gin behind me, it's like 68. It's dangerous. Um, anyways, so they use that for a particular reason. And, the name, and then that is, uh, is my personal view. The higher the alcohol by vine, the, more, the richer the flavours and the more spice you get from the spirit. So it's not there to get you extra drunk. That's not the intent. Welcome everybody, tuning in. We're talking about the, the release um, for those just joining us. Um, from the 50th anniversary special uh, mix at Crencendium Bay by Underground Spirits for the Native Australian National Botanic Gardens. Oh, this gin's getting to me. Get a grip for. Um, so yes, so Navy Strength Spirits uh, are designed to have the high alcohol, when you have the high alcohol by volume, essentially the spirit can carry, carry more flavour. So you could have richer, rich botanicals, um, richer flavour profile, and it's a bit akin, I use the analogy of a, of a curry. Sometimes you like a mild curry or a very hot curry, and that's done because the temperature is also part of the flavour profile. Um, and so the spirit is there to carry more intense flavours. It's not just there to, to get you drunk faster. That's not the idea. And it's a whole story around why it's called Navy Strength. We can talk about it another time. So um, we're going to stick around for a couple more minutes uh, for chat. And then at 12.30, some of the guys at Underground are going to join us and talk about all their range and fill some questions. So um, by all means, type away now. And they're, t- they're watching as we're chatting. And um, so what was the question um, before about that particular gin? So um, someone asked me if I can't scroll back. Can I scroll back? Yes, I can. Okay, so the question from uh, Lily. Hi, Lily, wherever you are. Um, the Bar Hill Tomcat gin in a martini. I love using the Garoni. Ooh. Now, I was thinking from memory. It's been a while because I had someone else in the States uh, last year. Um, and it was pretty punchy stuff. I'd go dirty with this one. Um, dirty martini. So you can probably dial up, I spot my little eye, something prepared earlier. Maybe some of this as your driver move, but have like a one to four ratio, so 15 mils of this. Uh, this is a bit of a richer kind of spicy uh, for move. We're digressing. Um, so one part for move to say four parts gin, and then add your three, about five teaspoons of your olive brine mix stir it around, have a taste and see how it goes. You can always add a bit more olive briny stuff. There's a channel plug, there's a clip on my YouTube channel about how you create your own dirty martini mix. And there's a little clip as well um, about how to make a dirty martini. So I hope that answers your question. Let me know how you go, but um, thanks for that. Yes, so for those who are joining, if you've missed the other episodes, don't freak out because I've recorded all this and I'll go on my YouTube channel next couple of days. Um, well, Lorraine, hello Lorraine, thanks for tuning in. Um, uh, yes, please do. Real time martini advice. At least I could do. <laughs> Thanks, Lily. Um, where was I? Yes, yes. So I've, these are all recorded. So these will go up on my YouTube channel. I'll, I'll top and tail on some pretty enough just a little bit. Um, so we've talked about their vodka range. We've talked about their gin range at the moment. We've talked about the Red Critium and the really interesting way they approach that. And, um, and the next one, we'll have a bit of a chat with some of the makers. Um, so stick around. Go make your drink. Get comfy, cup of tea if you're that time of day. No one's judging. Gin on a teacup? You can do that too. That's fine by me. Figure some questions and then come back in 15 minutes, uh, 12.30 our time, 
and Wall Chinwag with the makers of um, Underground Spirits. So if you're just joining in, um, we'll be back in 15 minutes. And if you've missed the other three or the other instalments, I'll get those up on my YouTube channel probably by, um, by tomorrow or Monday latest. And I'll send a link around so you can watch them at your own leisure. So we're just going to jump out now. Uh, we don't want to drag you around too long. Make yourself a drink. Come back in 15 minutes and we'll meet the guys from Underground. Okay, thanks for tuning in.